Welcome to another episode of Existence, the podcast where we are exploring the question, what does it mean to exist and pursue a life well lived through the contemplation of love, death, philosophy, and connection? My name is Evan. I am a U.S. Marine Corps veteran, and over the past couple of years, I have traveled over half of the U.S. living on the back of a motorcycle, as well as backpacked over a dozen countries across Europe, and somehow have ended up here in Budapest, Hungary, uh, just talking to people, and this is yet another one of those conversations. Today's episode is with Anna and Elise. They are both university students and friends here in Budapest, Hungary. Anna is majoring in history, and Elise is finishing her psychology undergraduate, and I'm super glad that they were able to sit down and have a conversation with me discussing things like resiliency, existential anxiety, maintaining balance, the importance of history and psychology, as well as other topics. So with that, hope you enjoyed the episode. Anna, Elise, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you guys being on. Thank you so much for inviting me. Yeah, of course. Uh, so I'm Elise, I'm 21. Uh, I will be graduating this uh, this summer from uh, the my psychology um, uh, BA course. Um, I really like it. Uh, my plans for the future are to work as a therapist, as a couples and family therapist uh, in particular. Uh, I've never been on a show like this, so I'm kind of nervous, honestly. But yeah, yeah. it's like a good nervousness. Um, and uh, when I texted you this uh, this afternoon, what we're going to be talking about, I was uh, kind of uh, trying to like prepare uh, to to have all these uh, thoughtful thoughts. But uh, well, you didn't really give the specifics. So, but you're right. So it's ju- such a broad question, and also like as a psych student, uh, I've learned about all these theories. What uh, like these big. Um, philosophers and also um, like uh, psychologists of the past have thought about this question so I'm, I'm pretty sure I am kind of influenced by that but I think that's like a good thing uh, because uh, because it, it makes it more interesting I think um, uh, so I, I'm, I'm kind of excited what we're gonna talk about here today awesome yeah I really appreciate you thinking about it you know I, I it is kind of it's, it is such an open question where I it's kind of hard for me to kind of pinpoint like what exactly it is um but I think that's kind of the point it's just it, it the point is to kind of allow the conversation to take uh the form it takes as we kind of just converse so sweet thank you um Anna please hi guys I'm so um I can't I'm kind of excited not really nervous but um Thank you for inviting me here. Of course. And uh, it's so good that Alice is here with me <laughs> because I really love her. Um, my name is Anna and I'm 21. Um, I uh, I study history and I really, really, really like it and love it. And it's kind of my passion. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I mean, as a as an academic style way, but uh, I really want to pursue this uh, this uh, in my future some kind of way i want to teach but it's uh, um, it's kind of a um, kind of a difficult question here in hungary to um, to teach as a, as a, as a high school teacher so i'm not really sure about that um, the main topic of ours is uh, my favorite topic. <laughs> I I always think about it in my daily life. I have a I think a kind of disturbed mind. So and um, I go to therapy as well. Um, so no wonder Alice and me are getting along so so <laughs> so much so good. Um, and uh, I think she made a really good point about uh, how our studies and the things we read in school and have to read influences us. But uh, I want to make another point that our uh, environment when we grow up, our family and uh, the generational trauma passed down to us really, really um, um, influences us. And uh, I think I have a really bad um experience uh, growing up and uh, I think um, I really had a negative view on life kind of a nihilistic nihilistic way and um, I just got out of really bad period uh, last year around this time I was really really um, bad let's just say that and uh, after that I'm in a really really new 
uh, perspective to just see life and try try to enjoy it in the purest form and way. So yeah, I think I hope I can contribute to this conversation. Oh, you definitely will. I I promise. Thank you for so much for uh, being vulnerable about that. It's hard to do. Um, and I, I think you guys, I think you bring up a good point is the, the, the idea of like where we come from, our history, our traumas, our past, um, we're all, you know, we're all affected today presently by the, by the history we've, we've come from and the experiences that we've had. Um, and it's, it's, it's not an, you know, it's, it's not an easy thing to, to, um, to reconcile with yourself because, you know, it's like, there's so many things that have you know, you, that are seemingly out of your control and have just, you kind of just ended up in the world as you ended up. And we're just all here trying to experience and trying to pursue something better for ourselves. Um, what is it that you, th- what is it that you guys think like really kind of pulls you out of those situations? You know, it's like, you know, you're talking about such a dark time in your life that you've, you've kind of had to pull yourself up from. What is it, um, what is it within yourself that you found in order to help you kind of grow out of it? Or at least, deal with it better because you know it's like life is such a a turbulent a turbulent thing it comes up and down there's so much uh there's so many variances between how we experience things so it's never like we're like truly out of anything you know it's like can always it can always manifest in different ways life has a way of of slapping us inside upside the face and 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 leaving us stranded and we have no idea what to do um unfortunately but you know what is it that kind of helps you keep keep uh keep you motivated to to continue I think my main lesson I had to learn uh, this past one or two years uh, that uh, I just and it's very cliche. It sounds very cliche, but uh, I I uh, I had to found my not myself is a very mm, vague way to say it. But I I had I had to face myself and face my failures and but also my achievements and I had to see. I had to learn to see myself clearly with all the bad and all the good. Uh, and then my main source of, uh, let's say, power or strength is that uh, I could uh, I, I, I could learn, I could accept myself the way I am and that I have to acknowledge my trauma. But along with my trauma, I had to acknowledge the, the, the mental strength, strength I, I had. Uh, and I have to this day, and this uh, made me um, made me some some way very courageous to just face other things going my way because okay fine I had survived it and I made it it was me who made it and so I found myself in a way who I am and what I'm capable of and uh, along with that. I lost many friends actually around my let's say dark times quote uh, <laughs> because I think I was in a way toxic um, I must be I think uh, but uh, along that I've gained so so many amazing and and golden people and loves uh, and uh, love in a romantic and in a platonic way always helped me so much when I learned that I can love so much and so deep it uh, it actually saved me not not uh, when I realized other people love me but when I realized I can love so much and so deep that I felt that it's it's the only meaning of life for me uh, that, that's pretty incredible though I, I, you touch on a lot of points there that I think are really important number one like finding yourself and like what it what that looks like and and I think we're always like constantly in the process of like what ourselves look like and it's constantly evolving because you know like what you were yesterday isn't the same person you were today um you know, and the person you're, you are going to be tomorrow hopefully you know it's like it isn't, isn't going to be the same person you are right now so you know it's like trying to trying to find yourself and that's such an important thing and i i i realized the importance of that you know i, I didn't even know what it what it meant you know when i was when i was a little bit younger um it, i i just didn't know what what that what that was like what who I was it was just like I was always following a path that was kind of laid out for me and I was just like going along that path and I never really questioned it I didn't question it at all I just you know people would you know tell me like hey you probably shouldn't be doing this but I never thought about it seriously I never even realized that what I was doing wasn't really um wasn't really a good thing to do number one and then not truly what I what was what was important to me and how I, how I want, how I wanted to pursue life. But I didn't even, you know, it's so hard to, it, you can't know what you don't know, you know? Um, it's just like one of those things where it, if you're just blinded to it, um, 
it's 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 just not something that you can really you can really you can really grasp because it's just not there it's just not you know you don't have the lens to view it from um but you know uh i i, I don't know at least like how how you've you've dealt with some of the the darker times in in life um do you kind of want to go into that a bit or Sure, I think it's gonna be a shorter answer yeah. than uh, from Anna, and also like uh, for me, it's a bit more uh, on the practical side. I would say, um, so uh, it's a big realization for me, and I think uh, many people around our age um, that our past doesn't really define us, but you have to um, you have to make sure it doesn't. So I think uh, for a lot of people, and also for me, for a long time, um, it was kind of um, comfortable to say, um, uh, it was kind of comfortable to stay uh, in the past in the sense that uh, that's what I know, that's what I know of myself, and I kind of made it my well I don't want to say I made my personality but it was such a big part of me that what happened to me and like family stuff and you know like past stuff um and it really takes um it really takes an effort to make sure that that's not really what defines you and you can make sure that that's not what defines you so uh, I think that everyone has strength in themselves but uh, for some people it's harder uh, to find that strength um, for me I think I've been pretty lucky because um, it was uh, pretty uh, easy for me I think to to find that strength in myself of course with help I had a lot of help from friends from people around me and also from therapy as also Anna mentioned which is I think very helpful and uh, I'm very glad that a lot of people nowadays realize the importance of therapy uh, I always say it's just like going to the dentist when you have tooth problem uh, then <laughs> you can also go to therapy if you have you know like mental stuff going on um, yeah, definitely. so so uh, I think that uh, finding uh, your your um your power, your power within yourself, and like what you're capable of, and not letting the past define you in that way. It's very um, <clears throat> helpful, but it also it's like it's like a, that you have to fight for it, so it doesn't come easy. And uh, it's very cliche to say, but you really have to uh, try to change your mindset because because if you've been living in something uh, your whole life, then it's kind of easy, uh, hard to just switch your thoughts from day one to day two. Yeah, definitely. I, I think um, you, you touch on a point that I was talking to uh, Dorsey, my partner, um, before yesterday, actually, was um, the the fact that you have to keep working at it. You know, it's like mental health isn't something that you just like all of a sudden like you fix and then it's like set there forever. Like it's 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 such a constant process of balancing things. And I think that's where, you know, learning how to balance is, is like one of the most important skills you can find uh, within yourself is because balance like really allows you to 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 find at least some sort of ground where you can kind of where you can start to operate from you know because I think at least in uh, at least from my perspective and from the experiences that I had and I, I would love to hear your guys experience with how you guys maybe kind of found a little bit of, of grounding or how you continue searching for grounding um, is like for me personally I was just like I didn't even know that I was like you, I wasn't even grounded like I just was like floating you know um, and I think that's probably uh, you know, a common experience that people can feel is, is the, uh, the sense of just kind of being out there and, and not really having any sort of base for yourself. Um, but once you, once you find that and kind of establish it for yourself, it, it kind of, it brings so much stability. And, and like, 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 like you said, it's, it's the constant, the constant moving forward and like, Put, having so on, on solid footing, you know, it's like every step you take every, every day when you wake up, you're like, okay, what do I have to do today? And like, what can I do today uh, in order to continue my, my, my solidity on, on, on this path of life, you know, but it's difficult. It's so, it's so hard. Um, but yeah, I don't know if you guys have anything to say on that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I was just thinking about what you said, finding solidity and grounding in life and uh, how you just build you up for the job the, and the job is life itself. And um, I was thinking about myself and uh, I think um, I'm, I'm that kind of person, that annoying type of person who just wants to do everything by, uh, by herself, themselves and uh, um, managing my life and just uh, doing this job I think I find the pride 
in in the in the way that I just do uh, everything by me by myself, and uh, I just don't ask for help. I didn't ask for help, and um, at at some point I realized that uh, it's okay uh, to ask for help, and I'm not really meaning. Uh, specifically therapy or therapist uh, kind of help that too but just uh, just sitting with uh, with your friend somewhere and just not the surface topics but just some just uh, look look deep down in their eyes and just say that i think i'm not okay and i think i just need a hug i think i just need you to look at me and say that you can do it just that and it's sometimes i realize that it just it's just enough to give me strength and and no one ha- had to do um, nothing for me nothing to do instead of me just just uh, just uh, support me emotionally and um, and that was um, i think some uh, some very very um, grounding experience for me when i realized that i have these amazing people like amazing people around me my friends uh and and uh, they are some part of my grounding because through them i can learn to ground myself i can learn so much from them so um i think uh, i think that's part of my answer but i don't know at least what you what you have to say about that so i think what anna says is very true and uh, it's good to not isolate yourself and to be surrounded by people who actually support you and like really support not just say they do but i i think on the other hand it's also important to um be okay with being alone from time to time uh, because it can be very refreshing um also especially if uh, if you're uh, maybe not sure about things in your life or like not sure about yourself and like trying to find out who you are i think it's there's no shame in being alone sometimes and it's not the same as being lonely i think um and uh, self reflection is always good i think um so doing that alone maybe uh sitting with your thoughts for a minute i think that helps a lot because then you can really reflect on what's going on in your life and how you could from your own strength maybe fix it and from your own strength i not i don't mean that uh, uh alone completely without asking for help but i mean that everyone's power lies um in different places uh, within themselves and uh, you have to take your time to find that so i think that also surrounding yourself with people but sometimes being alone because if you if you don't know who you are then you it's very easy to just um always uh attach yourself onto a group of people but that's not going to give you identity and it's not going to give you um stability necessary yeah for sure i mean it's it's the um you know it's like um like relationships obviously like they're so important um relationships are really an a, a, an axiom for for our our own our own mental health our own stability is like keeping keeping a, a solid base of relationships you know and, and learning how to trust people but you know it's like like you you pointed out on a of like w- being willing to like to say the things you you need um to another person that you trust um it's an extremely vulnerable act you know scary yeah it's terrifying you know it's 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 one of the hardest things you could do because you're just really you're putting out yourself in a way that you're really giving everything to the other person and hoping they're not just going to completely crush it and and when you do that it's 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 like that's an inherently vulnerable thing you know that's and it makes you stronger in that minute when you do it no for sure yeah and it, but it you know it's like and i, I i'm i i would I would hope I would I would say we'd probably agree when if when the fact that like when you do that you just get better at it you know it's like you get more confidence as you continue doing it um and and, and that you build on that uh as as you progress and that's uh you know it's so difficult what do you think is the thing that keeps people from doing that though you know it's a question that I always try to ask is like what is it that you think keeps people from being from being vulnerable and like how how do how does how do people kind of repress that side of themselves in order to not feel that way because it's extremely scary and difficult to do. I think uh most people um only see a part of other people's lives and uh, sometimes we tend to think that uh, it's only us who has problems in this world it's only us who has hardships and everyone else's life is so easy and so perfect and uh, sometimes people are I think just embarrassed to ask for help because it seems like 
everyone has to has it has it figured out and it's just me who who is struggling but that's not true so you have to change your mindset about that that other people are probably having their own battles with something uh so i think so i think maybe embarrassment and also like fear uh is something that that uh plays a part of this and also like fear of rejection that maybe uh, you're not going to receive that help that you're you're that you're um you're wanting to receive uh from from other people um it's it's scary i i consider myself lucky because i'm not very scared of this because i i kind of have the experience that people are going to support me uh, so I, I consider myself very lucky in that in that uh, department that's awesome yeah I want to agree with Elise that uh, I think I'm I'm not really scared either but I want to add another point uh, of being uh, scared uh, to just talk about these things and uh, I have experience with this uh, like the fear of uh, of um, not being understood like i'm not i i uh, never really uh, scared about uh, that um just uh, say it just openly i will um add an example i think uh but i i just i was afraid that um some other people other people around me who has uh, i assumed um quote quote normal minds just won't and can't understand me and uh it's it's uh it's nice it was not fear of rejection because i knew that they would uh, care for me after that but i just uh, felt that i'm so um different in a bad way that uh i just won't be understood and that's that's the scary part in another way uh and my example is um really um so it's a it's a it's a darker Thing, but I'm over it and I just want to make a point with that that um, last year when I was in a really bad period of my life I was afraid of that and um, I had I, I remember this day very clearly when uh, I went to work actually I was working with Alice I think that day uh, around that week and I was on on the bus and uh, I was um, in the middle of a really bad anxiety attack some kind of that and i knew i had to be better when i get to work so i just i wanted to just go through it but uh, i was really in the middle of it really bad and um, i was so angry at myself and also felt really um really helpless and i just looked around the bus uh, and i just you know i just uh, saw people just uh, scrolling through their phones or just talking or just doing uh, nothing uh and uh, I was thinking in in that uh, primitive um, part of my mind uh, that uh, oh yeah I think uh, I think I'm the bad one here and all these people just can uh, live their life without uh, thinking about oh I'm gonna die today right now because that was my fear uh, that day that time and uh, I was so wrong about that of course but uh, I uh, I was such I was in such a such a bad state of mind um, that I I just uh, assumed that it's just me. Uh, I'm I'm really bad here. I um, I will never get better. Uh, that was another uh, thought of mine. And also that the, I just watched these people around me, and I was like, I'm so jealous of them that they can just uh, sit on this bus without having an anxiety attack. But I didn't know that. And so I think uh, that's that's my main point that uh, we just don't know, but I assume that, and it was very, um, I don't know, help me with that word, um, very. It was mm. not good. Yeah, very <laughs> not good. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, existential anxiety. That's a huge. I mean, that's. I think that's really what kind of got me into doing this. And, you know, I, I, this podcast is called Existence. And like, <laughs> I, I was just like, I, I don't know if I, I, I've, I've, I've gotten, I have gotten existential. Uh, I'm not an anxious person, but I have been. I've, I've, I've had anxiety over existential things like death. Um, and it's so scary because, you know, it's like it's something that uh, it's inevitable, you know, and it's difficult to think about. But it's here, uh, or at least, you know, it's, um, you know, it, it's the thing. It's like, it's not here. It's not here. It's like, as long as we are experiencing something, it's not here. Um, and, and like, I think that's the comfort you, I have to take in, in that is like being able to 
find the the solace in me realizing like as long as i'm still breathing as long as i'm still here like then it's okay because it's just death yeah there's like a there's a quote by um epicurus it's like um wherever death is we are not and wherever we are death is not so it's just not something that we can it's not something that we can relate to because it's just not here um and whatever happens after is like such a you know, it's a huge question and many, many, uh, discussions and wars have been started over that, but, um, it's, 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 uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things where not only death, but just, uh, just like these big questions about, uh, existence and what it means to just end up here. You know, we've all just ended up here. We didn't choose to be here. We just appeared one day and then we started we started living a life and and the experiences that we had are the experiences that we had um how have you guys kind of dealt with the the you know not not necessarily just death but kind of like the the existential question of just what are we doing here you know my answer to this is not really the answer because because i just try not to deal with it and and i mean not in a not in a silly i'm not thinking about it way but yeah. but in a way that um there's really nothing you can do about it at the end of the day so so i, I don't try to deal with that because i just can't uh, i try to deal i try to focus on the on the here and now i think and on the positive sides because because my life has a lot of positives a lot of um, good friends a uh, great partner um pretty solid family life um studies are going well so right. so i would just say there's there are um many things that i would be uh, grateful for and um i can't really change what has happened in the past and i can't know the future for sure so i just try to deal with one problem or like one obstacle at a time and uh, i will let the future me figure out uh, the the future because because uh, maybe it's maybe it's silly to think about it this way because because it's kind of i, I don't solve it, uh, anything with it but uh, but i think I couldn't either. So yeah, it's no not matter meant to be I, solved. So sorry. No, no, you're totally good. No matter if I think about it or not, it's gonna happen someday. Um, so I just try to cherish the things in my life while while I can, and uh, and just try to not worry about it too much because because we're just so little particles in this universe that it would be silly to worry about all of it. I think. Yeah, I mean, it's the the idea of presence. What is presence to you? Well, right now this interview, <laughs> but uh, it's 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 such a big question. I I I don't really know how to answer it. Um, I just I just try to I just try to take every day uh, on its own, and uh, I try to uh, work to uh, towards my goals, and uh, I try to celebrate the little things uh, that I can achieve uh, that day, uh, and uh, I think I, I just try to live every day to the fullest, and it's it's in the little things really. Yeah, that's definitely. kind of my answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's no right answer. I think that's the important thing is like asking these questions. Like, there's no right answer to it and i and I, I that's i think that's the most interesting thing is that there isn't an answer like oh here it is this is the secret and it doesn't you know that's the that's not the point you know it's it's the point is like discovering the meaning in the non-answer like discovering the 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 unknown with the unknown um and i think that's cool but um you know i think still having the conversations are important because you know i think sometimes we can get caught up in being like, oh, well, it's just such a big answer and like, who knows? And you could think that and, and you know, it's, if that's the way we kind of go through it, um, it's just not how I personally uh, navigate the, the, the sort, those, sort, those sorts of questions just because, I don't know, I did just, I was always just drawn to me kind of seeking more into the, 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 the unknown of it. Um, but, you know, everyone, deal is, everyone deals with these, this existential anxiety differently you know everyone deals with these questions differently um uh on a wh how has it been for you kind of dealing with um these sorts of things these sorts of questions and trying to stay stay grounded in like the present moment um i think what ali said is really really important finding joy in the little things of life and uh, my main keyword here is gratitude towards everything but uh 
I think it's kind of idealistic that uh, you can just go through your day every day uh, caught up in your life and um, and I mean life in the and I get to work I, I, I have to uh, study I have to d- do this and that life uh, and it's uh, sometimes hard I think it's really hard to just stop and be present in that moment and just uh, just be and do nothing just 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 think and uh, I um, I uh, I think I what I love to do when especially in uh, in the summer or sometimes when I don't know every time the sun is out and I can just sit in the sunshine I think sunshine is such 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 a healing uh, component it's a secret component of my of my um, mind <laughs> to just be well <laughs> around well uh, because uh, I can just sit in the sunshine and uh, for a few minutes or hours and I just uh, I can just be and I do nothing in the moment I'm just being and I and in those moments I feel that ironically that I'm living life to the fullest this minute this moment because I'm doing nothing um I'm not supposed to do I'm just doing what I'm supposed to do and what I'm supposed to do is just just be and uh, I think uh this is this not sunshine itself, but it's part of it uh, of my journey to just uh, be gra- be more grounded, be better in um, in my mental health issues. Um, that uh, I I just learned that uh, that just being is a healing thing, and the other one is that. Uh, Unfortunately, I think I'm past that point with the uh, with last year crisis that I just uh, I can just live in so called denying about uh, death um, because uh, I was 19. I've never really had these thoughts about earlier, and it just hit me like a like a I don't know like a like a bus <laughs> or a train, uh, and it was uh, shocking to me. Um, and uh, I realized that I just can't, uh, I can't deal with it. I can't go any deeper either. I can't do anything. And there were some pretty desperate moments um, in in my life and in th- those days. And uh, there were days when I just realized uh, that I just can't do anything. I have to sit with it. I have to accept this uh, this thing uh, and the fact that I'm I'm bad right now uh, I was bad right, uh, then and uh, th- when I when I when I did this more times I just sit and accepted that I can do anything I uh, I was it was like I'm I'm getting freed from that from that um, anxiety and and uh, um, scary thoughts because something in surrendering to the to this unknown to death to the to the to our uh, fears something there is something liberating in that and i think i found it uh, because i was so bad in in my mind that i just i i couldn't do nothing else just this so i think it was a um unavoidable did um, i don't know um yeah an avoidance. You yeah, know, just yeah, avoid, yeah, yes. yeah. Um, no, you hit on a lot of great things. I, I, you know, just being is, is like such a, you know, I, I think you can take that in relation to the fact that, you know, you know, like you said, like you were like 19 and all of a sudden one day you just like seemingly woke up to the fact that you're living uh, this crazy existence and then like, we're just, you're just here now. And, and I have to die. Yeah. And you have to die. And, and that's, it's such a crazy thing because, you know, it's like you could grow up not thinking a, a thing about it. And then all of a sudden, like, oh my God, it can be like any moment, like who knows? And it's just such a crazy thing. Um, and I think, you know, when you go through an experience like that, it's, it's, uh, you know, you have to realize that that's always been the case, you know, it's like, it's always been the case, but it's only been your outlook on it that has changed, you know, it's like, when, when this is something that I try to remind myself as often as I can, um, and, you know, a, a meditation practice, like, kind of plays, plays a huge role in, like, just trying to be more present and grounded and, like, understanding thoughts that are, that are arising, um, but it's your, it's your, 
it's your outlook on it. It's like your frame around experience, it, which colors everything, you know, how you view it. And if you never had those thoughts before, you were living, you know, you could have lived a perfectly, uh, you know, a perfectly, uh, I don't know what the word is, just a, a, a life where you just never really thought about the, those sorts of things. And then all of a sudden, one day it hits and then you're like, oh, I can't ever stop thinking about this now, now that it's been ingrained in there, you know, and, and it's scary. But at the same time, it's like when, when we, when we take it as like, it's all, it's all, it's, it's all, it's, it's always been there and it's always going to be there. You know, it's not like, it's not like something new just appeared and all of a sudden you have to deal with it. It's always been there, but it's just been your frame of reference around that. And I don't know if you guys have been kind of, um, you've thought about it in that specific way. Um. I think, uh, in my life, it's probably not such a cardinal question as in Anna's. Uh, and I'm very thankful for that. And also, I think I'm in a very uh, privileged situation to think about these uh, questions. So, um, so well, so easily, I would say, uh, and so uh, care carefree. Yeah. Um, but but what you said, and you both said actually uh, in different words, that it, the most important thing is to accept it because there is nothing you can change about it. And for me, for for example, the the my my philosophy, I would say, kind of, is that uh, if I die today, then how would I view my life? And I I don't think about that death up. <laughs> Sorry. So I don't think about death that often. Uh, thank God. But um, but when I do, of course, um, uh, I try to view it uh, from a way that uh, if I die today, would I be satisfied with my life? And um, I try to uh, I try to do everything in order to say yes, I would be satisfied with that. So, for example, uh, I try to not. Um, I try to not keep any grudges with people because because I just wouldn't want to live my life uh, being on bad terms with someone uh, and also like like uh, ex uh, appreciating the little things is very important because that uh, makes me think oh I have a good life so uh, it's it's very easy to get caught up uh, in in uh, the negative and um, I as I say I'm very privileged to be able to think about uh, all the positives in my life. Um, but uh, if you don't, if you can't see it in yours, maybe you have to find it or you have to um, make some changes that that make you able uh, that uh, that help you find it. Uh, I, I don't know if I'm making sense, but uh, no, you're making sense. <laughs> okay, great. So, so what I'm trying to say is really just accepting how things are, like you said, and also like like being grateful. What you said is all very important, um, and just just being thankful for every day really because because you don't know where it's gonna end and that's the scary part of it but that's also kind of liberating like oh i have to only live this life once so yeah. <laughs> it's not like an endless circle so according to buddhism it is uh, it's an endless circle actually but i just wanted to say that yeah. i wanted to say another thing um that i agree with you that uh, i often think about that too uh, if i die today or i die tomorrow would i be satisfied um and uh, I want to um, say um, a problematic point for me here with that uh, with that analogy that uh, if I'm I am very very grateful also uh, for my life right now uh, as of today or yesterday and um, I want to continue living uh, this to the fullest I can do but um, that's the scary part for me because I love it so much I learned to love life so much I learned to appreciate. Uh, things and people uh, loves around me so much that uh, is the scary part that I could die and I'm very satisfied but I want more of it because I'm selfish and I want more of it I think that's very natural to feel like this yeah totally I, I, I agree with you and I resonate with that as well just because you know it's 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 like you said it's, it's just a natural thing to feel you know it, we're here we, we all we know is this this experience and you're hoping every day for just more better experiences and so it's 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 like this um it's like this kind of like uh i don't know it's like this push and pull of like just being as grateful as you can but also like wanting more of it and 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 i i totally get it and it's hard it's hard to kind of balance that but i i think it's um i, I mean gratitude in and of itself is like such a huge a huge topic and something i um, you know, I would try to remind myself 
every night with a gratitude journal and that's that's helped me uh immensely yeah, i'm doing that too. oh nice cool cool awesome that's that's super good i i'm i'm proud of you for doing that it's 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 like kind of like a it's almost like i kind of treat it like a journal too of like just me like oh I, like this happened today and that was cool um but you know no, i think it's it's really important and if you can do it it's a it's a cool thing to do um but it's just it's just about reminding yourself because we can always get so caught up in the in the every day it's like oh man like this didn't go my way or i spilled coffee on my shirt or you know it's like that coworker was kind of a rude to me or whatever you know what i mean like or in big things like you know people passing away or you know traumas that you've had to deal with and like huge things in your life that that are just you know just really shitty you know and and that's it's fine but hey you know it's like there's no there's just there's always something to appreciate at the same time you know there's there's always uh there's always a bright side to it but it's just look reminding yourself of of it and and I think that's where like a lot of contentment could come in. And I think there's a really big, a big difference between um, happiness and contentment, because like if, if, if we're trying to strive for happiness and, and, um, and feel free to disagree with me on this, but the, the, from the perspective that I kind of think about it is like, if we're always trying to strive for happiness, we're always going to fall short because happiness is, is almost a fleeting thing. It just comes and it goes like there's good days, there's bad days. And a part of life is just crappy things like Things happen and they suck and it's and it can suck really badly. And that's fine. Um, you're not always going to be happy. Like things happen, you get, you know, you could, you're dealing with depression, you're dealing with like an insane amount of things going on or whatever. Like, you know, there's a, there's a whole, there's a whole menu of choices to, to choose from, uh, you know, in terms of like things you could be dealing with. But at the same time, you know, it's, it's just a fleeting thing. And, and contentment is kind of just being okay and being just satisfied or not even, I don't know if it's satis satisfaction, but more just, just being content with, with what it, what it is, you know, the, uh, the ups and downs of everything. Um, and this is the ups and downs that kind of bring the meaning to, to life is like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't appreciate the good things without the bad things. It's the, the yin and yang of like all of life is there's this p constant push and pull. And it's almost as if like life is trying to balance itself out. Um, but I don't know if you guys would disagree with that. Um, I think I agree with you completely. Uh, I was just thinking about my experiences and I think how foolish I was uh, when I was younger. I'm still am um, though. Um, that uh, I'm always chasing something. I was and I am, I think. Um, I'm an, I think I'm an action-oriented person very, very much and my friends often hear me say something like, I, if I want to get something... I want it now and I want to get it. Uh, these things I say often and uh, <laughs> I usually say something like that too, that um, um, I, I need to get it, I need to achieve that. I, uh, as I said, as I said, and I um, I think I've, I, I've not grown up from that, <laughs> but I, I think I'm on the good uh, path. Um, so I think I'm I was chasing and I think I'm chasing happiness but uh I think slowly with uh, the people in my life right now and the experiences I have uh, lately this one or two years I think I'm uh, learning exactly what you you were saying that uh, I don't really need to chase anything and I this just this these are just words and feelings, fleeting things. But when I uh, can sit down at the end of the day and write in my pretty little diary that, uh, yeah, I had a great day today, actually. Uh, the, the bus was late, but uh, I, I uh, met with Alice and uh, we had a coffee and it was just so amazing that I, I can just put um, my uh, diary down and go to sleep and I can just... Uh, feel content that's okay i had a fine beautiful amazing day i didn't know do anything special but uh, it was so amazing and i'm so grateful that i'm living i'm able to just do uh, these uh, pretty amazing pretty small things oh that's yeah that's that's awesome it's it's the like you, like you touched on it's the little things that you know it's it's the little things that really um i guess bring bring the most amount of uh, bring the most amount of meaning to life because you know the, you were always I think we're probably always just trying to like search for like the big thing like 
what I don't know what the honestly it's like the big things are kind of like this big illusion that we're all just like the story that we're telling ourselves and like one day one day it's gonna be like that and it's like probably not it's and when you even <laughs> get it you wouldn't really appreciate it maybe. yeah exactly yeah yeah no it's always but it's 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 like also it's it's it's, it's like the 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 being aware of like how much work you're putting in to like get to those things um and everybody has their own everyone has their own goals number one and then everyone has their own way of getting to them and you know it's not like one way is the right way um but it's the little steps you take along the way to try to like make yourself a little bit a little bit better or a little bit you know even if it's even if it's like literally like you're just in the darkest hole you can think of and it's just like waking up that day and like brushing your teeth like it, if it's that bad like that's a good thing like as long as you can continue doing that and like that's that's what it is for you today and you have to be proud of yourself for that and like maintaining your own your own um just like being proud of yourself and like loving yourself in that way but it's you know uh again like like all things in life it's not it's not easy and i you know as i keep coming back to like it's difficult because life is just difficult in that way but you know i think it's important to remind yourself or at least you know at the you know, if you can like have people in your life and this touches on like the importance of relationships but like have people in their life that can can show you the what you can be proud of you know because it's hard to remind yourself of it and it's hard to be the person that is is uh the, the if you're the only person like telling yourself like I, i'm i think i'm good i think i'm good like then you you're also like missing it's number one like you can only do that for so long i think before you're just like stuck in your own head and you don't you you're just like you're really missing out on a lot of things that like are really good about you but you just can't see objectively because you're only you can see ob uh, subjectively from your own experience but um it's important to kind of yeah, have have the uh, an outside perspective of it and I, I think this is kind of something that I've been thinking about recently is like how, what the difference is between you could, you could have the same person. Like um, you could, you could, you could take one person and the, uh, the experience that they, or at least the, the, the frame that they see themselves from is completely different from a frame that another person sees them from, but it's the same person. And I think that's really interesting because it's, it kind of shows the, the, the range, the real, like the, the range of a, of a, of a human being and how complex somebody can be and, and how much, like how much there is to offer from a person, but not have that even, but, but that person doesn't even yet realize like all these other things that are so great about a person. They just, they're just difficult to grasp from the subjective, from their subjective experience of it. But, um, I don't know if you guys have something to comment on that. Uh, I actually do. So uh, what you said about how you view yourself and how other people view your, you view, uh, you maybe completely differently. Uh, I think it's very important in this question to uh, surround yourself with the uh, with the right people. And uh, sometimes sometimes that means that uh, that uh, maybe distancing yourself from uh, certain friends and. Uh, coming close uh, to other people because uh, how how other people around you view the world have a huge influence even if you don't want to they have a huge influence on how you view the world as well and how you view yourself because because we're social that's that's what we do and uh, and uh, if if you surround yourself with people who who have this negative mindset or or not being grateful or always seeing the the mm, the negative parts of life then you're you are going to think that way as well because because you will be influenced in that so I, i'm not saying to drop your friends if if they are uh, not supportive of this whole new um you and this new new perspective but you have to be mindful about it i think and um, you have to realize if maybe some people are not the best for you even if they are good friends it's it's kind of a hard question especially if if you realize that maybe your friends or the people around you are not the best influence in this case um but even just thinking about it uh, is helpful i think but that also takes self-reflection like everything yeah i that 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 really brings like the topic of like what is it when should you be cutting out people that are toxic you know it's like that's a huge thing um and you know that that it's like there's some relationships that just aren't good for you and it's okay like it, it, if they're if they're there like I, I this is like a huge lesson that i had to learn was like not everyone's gonna like you and that's fine and it's like it took me so long to learn that which was like Uh, I don't know why, like some things just like are so obvious, but like, I was like trying to like make sure, like I was like, how can I be the person that everybody like 
thinks is like a cool person or like is, you know, like easy going, whatever. And then all of a sudden I, you know, realized like, oh, like I had an experience with somebody where I just like did not vibe with them at all. And I did everything in my power to be like, oh, please, like I'm, I'm really not a bad person. <laughs> and and it just didn't work for whatever reason. And it, it's it's fine. Like it's fine. Um, and that was just a, you know, a case where I could just literally like leave and never see that person again. But some people aren't in those situations. Some people are like d- dating someone toxic or in a toxic relationship or like have family that's toxic or w- whatever, you know. Um, and it's much more difficult to kind of separate yourselves from those things. Um, but I think just kind of like you, like you hit on just like s- seeing yourself or giving yourself more self-worth and giving giving yourself the love that you actually deserve. And being willing to gra- uh, put put your foot down and cut out relationships that are going to hurt you and harm you in, in the long run. Um, and it's very difficult because some of those relationships are uh, very important. And and but as but you have to weigh that with the fact that like, I do I want this? Do I want this energy? Do I want this around me for the rest of my life? And, you know, that's a difficult question to ask. But something that something that. Uh, I've kind of been thinking about, I mean, this relates to kind of the whole thing and I kind of want to move past this, uh, this topic a little bit, but I really wanted to ask this question. Um, why why, it's kind of, it's a huge, again, it's a big question. Um, so there's no right answer. Uh, but why do you think it is that I think it's something that it's so difficult to find people that are like, like truly like healthy, you know, it's like, it's difficult to find people that are just like, you know, and nobody's perfect. Obviously, like it's varying, you know. But like, it's hard to find this pe- the pe- people that are really pretty grounded in in life. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that's the case? Why do you think it's so difficult? I mean, often, oftentimes, I'll hear about people, and I know people, and I've been one of those people, you know, throughout periods of my life that are just like completely. It's just a completely like whack thing, whatever. But it's it's really hard to to find like mental, uh, stability, you know, and, and this is, this touches on all the things that we talked about. Um, and I think I, am relating it more to the experience in Hungary and that's kind of like the experience that I've kind of been obviously immersing myself here with just living here now. Um, why do you think specifically like in Hungary, it's so, it's so bad. At least, I don't know if you feel that way. Uh, but that's the kind of the experience that I've been, uh, kind of discussing with, with Dorsey and everything, but I had kind of a similar conversation uh, with my boyfriend about this. Um, he was kind of more negative about it and negative about like uh, Hungarian um, people uh, and uh, this question in particular. And I was saying like, you probably only see the, the bad sides of it. So because that's what you concentrate on. But I think there also are a lot of uh, good things about us. Um it has definitely it definitely has a historical and a cultural element. I think Anna has more to say about <laughs> this than I do, but um, I'm not sure why it is. But I also think that doesn't really matter because you have to find the people who who suit your way of living, and you're gonna find that among Hungarian people. You're gonna find that among other people. I think as well. Um, because that's I think an overgeneralization of things, but but I know what you mean, of course, because because that's also what I see. I just again choose to <laughs> not not uh, not um, give it too much uh, thought and not not concentrate on it too much, and also try to find the people who are maybe not like that, or just the people who suit my way of living. I think a little bit more. I wouldn't know how to answer the question why it is, but yeah, yeah, yeah. it just is the way it is, I think. Mm. I agree with Elise, uh, <coughs> with that overgeneralization uh, word you said, but uh, I don't agree with the denying side, of course, but of course, whatever uh, suits you. Um, and I'm no better than you. I'm just um, in the um, kind of a feeling bad about it. Pit, <laughs> not the denying pit. Um, but uh, I won't go anything political on here. But I think it has pretty um, deep rooted political uh, problems. I mean, it Hungary, it, and uh, of, of course historically and of course nowadays. Um, but uh, I think it really, really, really matters where 
uh, you were born into this uh, economical situation um, and it's it's a nice uh, thought that you can um, choose the people you surround yourself with and have a nice life uh, with them around you and uh, that's what you should be doing of course but I think I, and I'm not. Uh, I don't uh, mean my situation because I think I'm still in the, um, in that kind of privileged uh, situation even. But uh, I think in different cases it's not so easy to just uh, choose the crew <laughs> you you go with um, in Hungary, uh, in in life around here, um, because uh, there's some some pretty um, bad economical situations and I'm um, not just in in the in the bigger level in uh, in Hungary but in the smaller uh, level in people's lives and um, I think I, I've thought about it a lot and um, I think I am a socially um, and emotionally sensitive person so I really uh, sometimes it really hits me when I walk on the street or uh, hear some t- something from, from a friend of mine. Um, and I don't like to go into denying. Uh, but at the end of the day, I of course, I can't really do anything about the state of our, our uh, country. But um, I I think the state of our country has, has an impact on uh, our lives and not just the materialistic way but in a in a psychological in a mental way that uh, I mean I know that um, when I have uh, existential anxiety and sometimes in a materialistic way uh, anxiety that I don't know how I could spend some later time of my life um because of the my <laughs> economical situation or the the um, the country's economical situation, and if I, I think I can only imagine this, but uh, if I would be living in a, in another country, um, with people with different states of mind, of course, I don't know, but it's an if. Uh, then maybe I wouldn't be such in a deep rooted anxiety hellhole. I, I don't know this. It's a, it's an it's in my imagination, but. I think it influ- influences us in a bad way and um, I don't know the answer for that but uh, it has an impact. Yeah, for sure. I mean there's no one answer. And I, and I hope when I when I kind of prep or ask, uh, asked the question, it wasn't, you know, I wasn't trying to get at the fact that it was like Hungary is like the issue of the people in Hungary. It's like the situation, you know, and it's like uh, I come at it from the perspective of of, you know, and it doesn't just affect Hungary, it's all over the world, but it's, it's this, the, the perspective that, you know, it's a problem, like anything else, like there's a, pro- there's a mental health problem everywhere, you know, and it's just sad to see because like there's a, so, there's so many good people with so many interesting ideas and so many, uh, so many personalities and so many things to, to get from people um, here and anywhere else, but it's just people are being so burdened down by mental health and the problems that come with that, which are everything, you know. But um, do you think it's possible to be completely mentally healthy? Uh, no, I mean, I, I mean, I think that kind of goes into like what you, what we, what we define as healthy. And I'm not really sure what healthy means. Um, I mean, healthy. I think, at least in some part, again, like these questions are always they're always complex, and there's no one specific thing to say. But I, I think it, like we touched on before is just like it's the finding balance and balance is so incredibly uh it's 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 um it's um it's just fragile you know it's like things can really tip the balance of things unknowingly like we can all just get a phone call today and then you know our par- one of our parents died and like something crazy happened or like you know who knows what what war might be started tomorrow and then all of a sudden everybody's lives are completely uprooted from how, well, their normal way of being. And so, you know, balance being this fragile thing, it's, 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 it's always in, it's always in constant, like just trying to, trying to balance it all and trying to keep it all steady. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. I don't, I wouldn't, I think there is, I think you could find like true healthy, a healthy life, life, mental, mental health. I think, I think health uh, mental health is possible like you can achieve that uh, but it's not perfect like nothing is nothing's perfect you know um, so I, you know I think I, I think that's probably the more perspective I take on it
And also, in my opinion, it's not really the question whether or not you can find the perfect mentally healthy place or the person, because because that's that's probably uh, too too good to be true. But also, the the more more important thing I uh, I think is whether or not you're willing to try to achieve it, or whether or not you are willing to better yourself every day, because because that's what matters. Because you you won't be perfect, uh, you never will be. But but. Uh, trying and still trying to better yourself and make yourself less toxic as you you mentioned uh, toxic people and toxic relationships uh, you just have to try every day i think on your level and uh, like sometimes it's a big step sometimes it's just a tiny step but but trying is very important i think yeah i think uh, this thing at least described as trying and just learning i think it can be summarized by the skills you can just uh, you can develop skills throughout your life to just navigate through it, I think. That's my point of view. I'm not saying I have these skills, but uh, it's my goal to just acquire these skills. And uh, I don't know what would happen if I got a phone call about some terrible thing, but uh, I I hope that um, some later time of my life, uh, when I will be better and learning <coughs> and growing, and balancing myself out, uh, I think I will acquire these these sets of skills to just to just if I in front of a problem, I can just sit and just think I can deal with it. Definitely. Um, I kind of I don't want to talk about a little bit of a, a change here. Uh, I think um, being able to I, I kind of want to talk about humility. Um, like what it what it is what is it. What does it mean to be humble about yourself? You know, because we're all the, the phrase I always come back to is like we're all filled with bullshit, and it's, it's okay. Like everybody has BS in them. Everybody is just filled with shit they shouldn't be saying, and things that they do that they shouldn't be doing, and things that we're just completely unaware of. And um, and you know, we all make mistakes. It all happens. How do you think we become more more humble? How do you think? How do you think we check ourselves more often? Well, for example, for me. Um I, I wouldn't necessarily call it humble, but in a way it's, it sure is that, uh, like I have mentioned here earlier, that I'm very privileged. I, I am very privileged to be able to think the way I think because, uh, because some things don't influence me that other people uh, live with every day. Uh, but, uh, but I think that in this way, comparing yourself to other people is kind of helpful because... Um, you can see that it could be worse and then it's more uh, easy for you to be grateful for the things that uh, you have that day, I think. Um, of course, we say that don't compare yourself to other people, but it's it's also about balance, I think, in this question as well, because sometimes you can, sometimes you can, uh, especially if you think that your day was the worst day ever and, and uh, all, the, all the problems have fallen uh, upon you. Um, some people probably have it uh, harder and I'm not saying that then your problem do doesn't matter, but it kind of puts uh, you in perspective. As, uh, I mean, at least for me, for maybe it doesn't work for some people that way. For me, it kind of does. And that helps me a lot, I think. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think humility is like, yeah, I think, I think, you know, I, gratitude and humility i think i actually i think i have a i think i think i have like one of my earliest episodes i i think it's titled gratitude and humility or maybe it's vulnerability i don't remember but i think they they're 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 adjacent concepts like um i, I don't know I, I think i think it's something i have to think more about i haven't really i haven't really i don't know i don't, I don't know if i've given enough thought but um so i think uh, it's an important way um that to check yourself is to be aware of yourself in every way to just be clear about you just know uh, the bad and the good things about you the good qualities and the bad qualities so you won't mistake yourself for something or not yeah um you guys so you guys are in you guys just finished school almost like you guys finished your thesis is these size? I don't know. I, I did, yes. <laughs> okay. I, I didn't. I still have one year. Oh, you have one more one more year. Okay, my bad, my bad. Um but so psychology and history, right? So what is one of the questions? I guess um Elise, I'll start with you. What is a question about psychology that you've been thinking most about? Like what is what is something that, that you've it's been troubling you? Or at least uh something that you've given the most amount of thought to? 
Well, you have really given me a good question. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I would have to take a minute, I think, um, because uh, every time I read about something new, it kind of influences me in this way and it kind of um, opens a new perspective. Um, something about psychology and something that's been bothering... Well, I wouldn't say bother, but, but something that um, I have experienced uh, these past months and also uh, what, I, uh, what I've been meaning to work with as a therapist. So, so I would like to, I would like to um, work with uh, couples and with family, uh, families. And um, I think uh, one of the... It's a very uh, sorry. I'm I'm uh, blabbering a bit. No, you're totally good. Don't <laughs> worry about it. So uh, something that I've been wanting to study and something that I've I will uh, implement in my uh, career as a psychologist is uh, something that we call in Hungarian um, system perspective. I I'm not sure what the English word for it is, but uh, uh, we call it system perspective, and it basically uh, means that. Um, even though you're an individual yourself, uh, you are part of a system. You are part of your family and you are part of uh, maybe your your relationship dynamics between two people. And uh, those systems inherently um, affect each other. And uh, something that happens to you will have an effect on other people and the same uh, in the different directions. So something that happens around you will have an effect on you. Uh, and uh, this is natural, I think, and um, we experience it every day, uh, in more or less. Um, but I think uh, it also is about balance, uh, like um, how much you let it affect you, uh, first of all, and uh, how you can achieve a state where um, you only let uh, things affect you that you want uh, to be um affectionate towards you so sorry I, I i don't know if if i'm making sense here but you uh, no you are yeah yeah <laughs> it's like the ripple effect that everybody has on each other yes basically yeah. yes and also th this can be positive and negative as well because because uh, a lot of negative things can infl uh, influence you and have their effect on you but also the positive things and uh, setting boundaries in this is very important and i would like to work with this someday uh, it has also been a huge personal uh, learning experience for me how, how how I am in this system in my own life um, and uh, I think I just find it very interesting and it's kind of scary but also reassuring in a way that you are not alone you're part of something bigger yeah we're all part of like a, a system we're all we're all I mean a system is like a, I feel like that's like an analyst it's I mean, I mean psychology uh, can be very analytical um, but you know, it's like uh, it's, we're just part of something collectively. We're part of a collective experience and everybody's impact has an impact on everybody. And so that's like uh, it's it's yeah, it is comforting. It is comforting. And it's also scary. Um, you know, who knows what goes is going on right now that's going to affect us, you know, tomorrow. So it's uh, it's 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 a cool thing to think about, though. Um, you know, I, uh, I I think it's probably something that. I, I have thought a lot, a lot, uh, thought about a lot, not from a like a psychological perspective, but just from a experiential. Like, what I do now has an effect on you know the 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 things that not only affect me in the future but affect other people. And you know, I think uh, this is a conversation that I was having actually uh, yesterday with somebody that I had an interview with, um, just just about just about doing like just you know what kind of impact we want to leave on the world, um, and it's. You know, it's just the small things that you do. You know, maybe it's just giving uh, a little bit of your extra change to somebody on the street, or maybe it's like a huge thing of like I don't know, um, curing cancer. Obviously, like whoever discovers that. But like, there is a whole range of things in between that you can do that are going to try to impact the world in a positive way, in a way that you feel as if it's going to be uh, a better place to to leave. Um, but you know, I, I guess I, I I would have to explore that more uh, psychologically if I if I uh, if I uh, I don't I'm not I'm not a psycho uh, I'm not a you know I, I haven't studied it like that but uh, I think it's really cool though. Um, you've gotten a lot of, a little bit more time to think about your answer to to Thank the question. Thank you for okay. the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure I've gotten anything yeah. yet. <laughs> but if you if you have like yeah so like whatever if there's any a question that you've been thinking about or at least um, you know it doesn't even have to be like a question it just be like something that kind of caught your interest as you've been studying um, history. Yeah, history. Like whatever whatever has caught your interest. 
Um, first of all, I think history has been my passion since mm, all my life. Yeah. Um, even if when I was a kid, and I think I have a more self-centered um, reason for studying it than Alice, um, because I really like it and it's interesting. But uh, the more I get into it, um, on a higher education level if I can say that like it's more than high school and it's totally different um, than we learned in, in high school um, you were you were talking about collective experiences and being part of a system and actually it's the system like history is the system we are all part of not as just a state uh, a country we, as humans as people the, the history of human beings the history of of human experiences uh, the the things if we can believe that that uh, another concern of mine if we can totally one hundred percent believe it and that's what I'm studying that's what I'm learning from my professors that uh, no one is sure n uh, about what has happened exactly and uh, uh, no source is one hundred percent accurate and we can always keep an open mind and we can always we should always keep an open mind and uh, we should always um, be open to new possibilities uh, as the technology um, and um, our um, information uh, grows. Uh, so being part of the system, as history it is, uh, I, it, what amazes me is that uh, we st as human beings started somewhere uh, you can think it like uh, politically or just uh, technologically or um, philosophically. We started somewhere at some point and um, we evolved in very, uh, in every way, uh, very much. Uh, but as human beings, as the nature uh, we have, uh, we are humans. We are just um, as... Um, as uh, sometimes um, selfish or um, uh, what's that word? Uh, when you a uh, power driven that uh, some um, Roman or ancient the Greek um, um, sub leader. Yeah, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, leader word. Uh, so and also the love, the question of love. There were um, and it's also like. Um, uh, literature but like there were love poems every every um time in ancient from ancient greek to nowadays so uh, the human nature of it all what we have as humanity achieved and um, sometimes destroyed uh what 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 amazes me yeah I think Anna has put it really beautifully and this is where both of our fields kind of join together that we as humans all throughout history had the same concerns, the same feelings, the same struggles, uh, the same experience of love and I think that's so beautiful and it really puts you into perspective that no matter if you didn't figure ever, everything out yet, you will because people have been thinking about this all throughout these centuries and that's I think it's very beautiful. <laughs> No, I think that's a great point. Um, and yeah, it, it is a really beautiful concept you bring up is the, is the idea that, you know, it's like we're, we're, and we're always, we're, we're, we're left here. We think like we're the first people to like deal with these problems. When it's like, just look at, look at all the, um, the craziness that have gone on before us. And, you know, they, they had to deal with it. And it's not, it's not been an easy path, but it's like, you get through it and whatever happens, happens, you know? And, you know, we can, I think we can kind of get caught up in like, well, what does it mean for the future of humanity? Because especially, you know, when we, when we, when we think about, you know, crazy things that are happening with like artificial intelligence now and like, like, what does it mean to be human? And these, uh, these existential questions about the, the future of, uh, our, our species, it's, it's, you know, it's all part of an evolutionary path. And I think that's what kind of brings comfort to me is like, it's fine if, if you know, I, and this is my perspective and I understand why other people wouldn't uh, resonate with this. But uh, like for me, it's like, it's fine if like, if, if we as humans aren't around anymore, you know, 500 years from now, a thousand years from now, maybe we get taken over by computers or whatever. But we weren't also, we weren't always here before anyways, you know, humans weren't always here on the earth. There was things before that and we evolved from that and we all evolve in the future. It's just, the path that the universe takes and 
Um, it's, it's not a, to me, it's really not a scary thing, but I think specifically when we talk about like humanity and what it, what it means to be human, it's, it's, it is, it is such a comforting feeling that like other humans have gone through asking the same exact questions we've gotten when, like, where does, where does, uh, you know, it's like, I, I also think you really touched on a, a good point of, of knowledge. It's like, we didn't know, we don't know exactly what happened. You know, there's a lot of books that were written thousands of years ago that, you know, are handed down from generation, generation to generation and have been translated through many different authors and languages. And now all of a sudden we have them and we take them for like the word of whatever. And, and, you know, it's like, we don't know exactly what the process of that is, but it's, keeping an open mind and being, being, uh, uh, you know, humble enough to realize that maybe we don't have it all figured out, but that's okay. And it's gonna, you know, it doesn't mean that we can't, the way we get through that is just to be able to, to, to be able to continue with an open mind and be willing to, to think about things objectively and just kind of take the comfort in that. But I, yeah, I think that's a really good, it's a really good thing. I personally haven't been, um, uh, I haven't been affected by history like you have. I, I think history is very, so it's so important. It's like one of the most important things we can think about. Um, uh, for whatever reason, like history for me is like, um, it's just, it's hard to read for me. It's just re- extremely hard to read. Um, and I don't know why that is. Do you, do you have any advice on to help me get into more history? Um, I think uh, you can learn history by just... Um keeping an open eye and keeping an open mind around you like you don't I, what i'm saying is you don't have to just sit down with a, a huge book <laughs> about ancient rome and just read it on the spot and now yeah. you will know everything about it like that's so dry and uh, i wouldn't do it myself either um but uh i think um, all of our uh, fields we study in uh, I mean in high school or even in university uh, has some kind of uh, reach towards history uh, or vice versa actually because I've been studying about um, um, psychology uh, the history of psychology so actually and I think you had to study the same thing about yes I did <laughs> so I think it has a lot of um, field when you can find. Definitely. No, for sure. I mean, I, th- I I love philosophy, so maybe I should start reading about yeah, the history of I philosophy. Yeah, I think one of my favorite courses was uh, the history of f- uh, philosophy. Okay, great. Yeah, maybe I'll... If you got any book recommendations or anything to look at, please let me know. Um, yeah, I, I think that is cool. Like, just like, you can take it in different avenues. It doesn't have to be one specific. Um, you know, like, I, I, I took, like, a, like, a world history class that was, like, covering, like, so much amount of time in such a small amount of... Like, like I have two months to, like, learn all of these things... And I can't like it's just to me it's just it's just so yeah, it was so much. I think it's definitely not meant to study by by that way. I think. Yeah, for sure. And and there's so many different subsets of history where you can get. And that's into. where the interesting lies part, at least for me, um, the the history of uh, I th- it's in it's the it's a mirror translation in, in from Hungarian. So it's the history of. Uh, uh, society, uh, the connections between society in a, in a specific era or a specific time period, and we have seminars for for this in uh, uh, every time period, uh, two or three seminars. So it's a pretty long um, but very deep topic, and uh, it really just opens so much win- windows and doors and everything in me because uh, we go so deep into that. Uh, Totally. Yeah. I, you know what, you know what I, I think now that I think about it more, I think, uh, personally, I'm always so caught up in thinking about like how to be more present and how to like, what the, uh, honestly, it's either presence or future. Cause I like, to me, it's like the past is the past. Like that's, that's what it is. And obviously I know it's important. Uh, but I'm like trying to focus so much on how to be present and how to be here now. And, and that's been such a, uh, an axiom in my day to day thinking where, uh, to me, history, like personally was just like, oh, like it's always been on the back burner of like, there's a lot of things to learn and read. And there's a lot of that, but I'm like, there's so many other things to learn and read for myself personally about like, you know, presence and philosophy right now. So it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, everyone has their, I think that's what's cool though. Everyone has their own, their own medium of what they find interesting. And that's, I think that's really cool. Um, have you guys been satisfied with, um, the 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 choices you guys have made in your like your your education um in terms of like majoring and something have you guys is that something 
I, I'm absolutely satisfied, yes. Um, I, I'm very excited to continue my studies uh, at the master's uh, level. Um, I, I really like psychology and I, I'm really passionate about it. That's awesome, yeah, yeah. And same for you? Yeah, same same for yeah. me. Yeah, that's awesome. Because I think, I think maybe I come at it uh, differently because I've, I've talked to so many people that have, um, yeah, I've, I've never gone to, uh, I've never, I don't have a degree or anything. I've taken some college classes, but um, I think a lot of people who have talk, I've talked to, especially when I was younger, um, that you just get out of straight out of high school and then you just go into a degree program to just do something. And um, I've always talked to so many people that are like, yeah, I don't even use it. I don't, I really didn't care about my, my major. I just got it. And that was that. And yeah, that's a pretty common experience, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. So good on you guys for actually choosing something you're interested in and continue to be interested in after studying. And I think that's that's probably like one of the most important things is when you start, when you actually start, uh, you, when you decide on a major and you actually like chose that, choose that route of uh, education and knowledge. Um, a, a lot of the times, like maybe it's just like you, you switch, you know, it's like, oh, maybe that really wasn't the, the thing I wanted to think about. Um, uh, maybe it's, maybe it wasn't the right choice for me. And, you know, you can kind of flip flop, but um, I think it's really cool that you guys actually chose something that was good for yourself. Um, the uh, before we end here, I I do I I like ending it on something that's not as heavy and deep, um, but music. I love music. Um, you guys like music. Um, uh, there, I'm always searching for good music recommendations. Or if you guys have anything you guys want to shout out in terms of uh, some some good some good uh, music knowledge or or anything anything related to music. So. Um, if you guys have any recommendations, feel free to look through your Spotify if you guys have anything or if there's anything that's been on you've just been really into listening to at this moment. I will start by saying a very short thing. Uh, I've been living in a 21 Pilots brain rot for the few uh, <laughs> last few months, so uh, that's what I'm going to recommend. I think nice. everyone knows it, so that's it for me. No, that's great. What you have a specific uh, album or a specific song? Um, 21 Pilots is good. I do enjoy 21 Pilots. Yeah, it, it just got stuck for me <laughs> this um, past few months. Uh, it started with Blurry Face. I mean, I've knew all the songs, but it just, it's a brain rot, recent brain rot. Uh, so Blurry Face, and now I moved to Vessel. So I would say Vessel. Okay, I'll link it in the description for you. Thank you so <laughs> much. <laughs> For me, honestly, I really love uh, Hungarian music, like uh, alternative rock music, I would say. Yeah. So if I have to recommend anything, I will resort to Dorci because we really have, uh, I think, the same uh, music style in that way. Um, but I've been listening to <coughs> uh, to uh, a Hungarian band called Hormiz Y, which is like 30Y uh, it translated. 30Y, uh, that's what it means? No, it, it that's the name of the band. It's just like like it. It's not a word. Oh, okay. Uh, and uh, they they have I think pretty pretty good music. Pretty good. Pretty good. Yes, yeah. Yes. Okay. I Second. really love it. <laughs> and also, I've been listening to a lot of Maneskin these days because I am going to the concert next week, and I'm very excited about it because I bought it two years ago, but because of COVID, it didn't happen, and now it's finally happening, and it's very great. Sweet. What What was that? It's It's Maneskin. It's Maneskin. this it, Italian, Italian. Uh, okay. rock band. Okay. Sweet. Do you have any songs you would recommend by uh, either of them? Uh, I really like this song uh, called. Uh, Coraline it's not it's it's spelled differently in Italian but I don't know any Italian um, and uh, it's part Italian and part English they have some songs in English uh, but I would really recommend that and they also do a lot of uh, like covers from uh, older popular songs as well cool yeah no that's great um, yeah I've been been getting schooled up on on, on the Hungarian the Hungarian like indie rock scene. We saw Fran Palermo, and that was great the other night. Oh, yeah, I know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we keep seeing them at the at uh, Cuspont or you know like whatever bars we go to. We keep seeing all the, the band members. The the um, one of the members, I think the guitar player, is the son of my high school English uh, Hungarian teacher, and he always uh, he always mentioned them because his son was in the band. Oh, nice. Explain to me why everybody in Hungary is like everybody's connected to something. Every I swear on my life, like 
I will just go out and be like, oh, this guy's from that thing, and then this guy's from this other thing. I'm like, I know my cousin's sister knows I this guy. I think it's the Budapest experience. Yeah. It's the Budapest experience? Is that what you say? I mean, um, I've recent, I was recently introduced to it, actually, but one of my friends said to me, and it stuck in my head, uh, when I was, uh, I think, complaining about the same thing. Not complaining, but, you know, and he said to me, just, um, Anna, you can't just... Um, uh, just go outside and just uh, talk to the first person you saw and uh, actually he sh- she he they will know someone they will actually know someone you know and it's crazy and it's uh, most of the time true yeah i feel like i feel like it is true it's interesting i i, I think it's cool because um i think it's cool because it makes it makes a big city feel small um and i i, I don't know especially like having having like obviously like me being a foreigner here um having a Dorsey being being my guide around everything has been like so helpful to be able to uh, kind of navigate the space of like going to all like the cool places and like meeting the cool people that I would have literally no idea. I would just be showing up here. Um, but I think that's really what, what's interesting about sh- sh- being in a, in a new spot is just like completely like learning about a whole different culture. I mean, I grew up in Southern California, which is a completely different area of the world. Um, and I think it's, it's, such a, it's such a nice experience. And I was talking to another American expat uh, la- yesterday about this experience and I, I think it's really cool do you guys have any a- advice for me as a as a foreigner in this in this uh in, in Hungary who yeah I haven't been here like that long it's been like uh, I don't know two months um and do you have any advice for me in or- in terms of like navigating the the space of Budapest I would say in Budapest it's pretty easy because there are a lot of foreigners and I think uh, people are usually more open towards foreigners um I would just say put yourself out there and and go to uh, these events uh, like like these these concerts these art shows whatever um, because because I think that's a good good um, way to meet people and also it's kind of it's very lucky if you have someone who who can show you around and show you um, the the things they like and the, the people they they know. Um, yeah, I think it's a it's a different experience from being just a tourist here. Yes. Oh yeah, for sure. I I think there's so many tourists here, um, but it is different from like people who who live here. Um, and I haven't lived here long. Um, but yeah, no, I think it's really interesting. I mean, we're, I'm always like running to you guys, uh, like, <laughs> running on the street the other day. And, like, we are actually running into yeah. each other all the time. <laughs> but it's but it's cool, and I, I really enjoy it. But I, I appreciate you guys being on the the podcast. I I really uh, enjoyed your guys' conversation and your guys' input. Um, from your, from your individual minds it's been it's been really interesting kind of getting a, a, a different perspective from from people that i i uh I, I i know have really interesting things to say so i appreciate you being on thanks for thanks for uh lending me your time for a little bit thank you for inviting us thank you for having we us really it, was a, it. it was a great conversation yeah yes. it was thanks <laughs>